Lucio with the Oracle Outlook for the week starting April the 1st, 2019. Thanks so much for tuning in and joining me for this week's video reading. I am so happy to have you here. This week I had to give some thought to what system that I wanted to work with this week. I've had a number of new decks start coming in because I backed projects on Kickstarter and Indiegogo, so those decks are now starting to make their way to my mailbox. I'm so happy. And I this week I got two tarot decks in particular, and so I was th thinking about working with those. I was really excited because getting a new deck in the mail for me is like it's like Christmas, right? So I was very excited to work with those, and I thought, oh, I could work with these decks maybe for this week's reading, but then I realized I just spent a whole month of doing tarot in February, and so I wanted to give some breathing space or room for other decks and other systems um, between that time where I worked on it for a whole month and the next time I present a tarot deck in this space. I wanted to have some time go by. So then I started thinking about, okay, well, what other systems have I worked with since I did that month of tarot readings? So I went down my list. I said playing cards, check. Lenormand, check. Kipper, check. Gypsy Witch cards, check. So I'm like, okay, I could start that cycle all over again and start again with one of those. But then I realized that I have also on the way in the mail a deck of gypsy cards coming. So I thought, oh, I haven't worked with gypsy cards in a while. The last time I worked with a deck of gypsy cards was, I think, in November of last year, somewhere around there. And that was the deck of Hungarian gypsy cards. And so since that time, I've acquired, of course, another deck of gypsy cards. So I thought, okay, while well, I'm waiting for the third deck of gypsy cards to come, I could work with the second because the second has never been used in this space. So this week I'm going to work with a set of Gypsy cards that were published by Piotnik. So again, Gypsy cards are different from Gypsy Witch cards, right? It's a whole different system. And so I'm very excited to see what's in store for us this week in terms of information, guidance, advice from the Gypsy cards. And so now let's move from here to the table and take a closer look at the cards that are going to be making up this week's Oracle Outlook video reading. And here we are with the cards on the table. I'm going to take a few moments to shuffle the cards. And as I do, I'm focusing on my usual intention for these weekly general readings. And that is, we're asking for the information for the guidance, for the advice that's going to be most helpful and beneficial as we move through the upcoming week. Feeling one more time will be good. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and cut the deck. Now fan the cards out, and I'm looking for five cards in the fan that are getting my attention. So I see one, two, three, I'm looking for card four, four, they all seem to be on this side of the fan this week. <laughs> and now looking for the final one, I see this one as five. Okay, so those are the five cards. Taking the remainder of the deck up, putting that to one side, and now I'm going to take a moment to line the cards up. All right. And just like when I work with Lenormand, when I work with Gypsy cards, I like to look at the middle card first. For me, the middle card represents a central issue or something that we're being asked to focus on for the week ahead. And this card is, okay, here we have card of loss. So for me, this is an interesting card. So I read it a couple of ways. So the first thing is that there may be a focus on some type of gamble because the two men on the card are playing cards. So for me, this could represent gambling. So there may be a situation 
that we're focusing on that's getting our attention this week that may seem like a gamble, right? So if that's the case, you have to ask yourself, what is the level of risk within the situation? You know, this could be a situation where you feel like you may be taking your chances on something and you have to ask yourself, is the risk worth it? Right. So that's in the sense of gambling. Right. For me, another aspect of this card can come up when we're focusing on something in which there's a sense of coming up short, going with the idea that the card is named loss. So this could represent, you know, um, some kind of uh, shortcoming or, you know, something in which we come up on the, the short end. Or on the losing side of something, you know, so this could just be saying to that there may be a situation we have to maybe uh, go through carefully if we're feeling that we're going to come up short or there's going to be some kind of loss involved. So now for me, this is personal to me. I notice that the two men are playing cards and as a card reader, I always look at this card as the action or activity that's symbolized by the table because the table represents work or activity, of reading or studying cards, right? Because it could look like, in one respect, that they're playing a game of cards, right? Game of chance. In another respect, as a cardomancer, this could be two people who are actually reading cards, right? I'm looking at the gentleman here on the left, or my left, and he's putting down a card and he looks like he's reading the card, that kind of thing. And then the other person is studying the cards in his hands. So this could be for some people that you may be encouraged this week to actively work on your studying and reading of cards. So there is that. And I tend to think with the one guy smoking the pipe, this could represent somebody who's got a certain amount of experience. I tend to think of pipes as maturity and experience. So this could be somebody who has some level of experience. Now, another thing here, going with the imagery. This could mean that there's going to be a situation, and this may be coming back to the idea about taking a chance on something, right? So there's a situation here in which we may need to put our cards on the table, right? And so that may be in a situation with another person, we may have to put our cards on the table, which means that we may have to share something, and we're not sure how the other person's going to be uh, re receptive to it, how able they're going to be receiving it, that kind of thing. But this could be, you know, the idea of like uh, revealing something, sharing something, um, putting your cards on the table, right? And then I notice that one person is wearing white or it looks like a cream color, right? And the other person's wearing black. So this could just be a matter of looking at something, uh, you know, with two extremes, you know, being black and white, you know, and it could be saying too, like there may be a situation that is not, um, it's not black and white, right? So again, loss could represent taking a chance on something, dealing with something in which we have to take a look at our level of risk involved, you know, whether we're going to come up short or on the short end of the stick, you know, it could be actually dealing with a, a what you perceive to be a shortcoming, right? If you're a card reader, this could be giving you encouragement to work on your studying and reading of cards. And because there's two people on the card, it could be a situation with another person in which you may have to put all your cards on the table, right? And as I'm saying that again, I'm being reminded of the, the song The Gambler by Kenny Rogers. You know, the idea you got to know when to hold them and know when to fold them know when to walk away kind of thing. I'm hearing all the lyrics from the song, right? But it's a matter of are you going to put all your cards on the table or are you going to play your hand close to the vest? That's what's coming to me in the moment looking at the image again. Right? So it's a matter of like there may be a situation this week where on the one hand, you may be feeling, and I just realized that's a pun, on the one hand, you may be feeling you want to put all your cards on the table, and on the other hand, you may need to be more mindful about playing your cards close to the vest. You know, so it's, it, it may be a matter of what are you going to choose to share, and what are you going to choose to not share. Right, so that's 
what I'm seeing in the moment with loss. So I may come back to that based on the surrounding cards. So now let's take a look at that. So if this is about a gamble, shortcomings, dealing with uh, coming up short with something or uh, putting your cards on the table, let's take a look at what these cards are immediately flanking having to say about that. So on the left we have, okay, so here we have Officer on the left side. So Officer is a card that can represent a discipline. So if, if I go with the idea that this may be about the reading and studying of cards, you know, for somebody who may be working on their cardomancy skill, then this could just be about being disciplined, right? So one of the things is that if you're wanting to maybe um, become more experienced, going with the man smoking his pipe, then this is saying being disciplined, which means that you may have to make a commitment to having to work with the cards, right? For some people, they may be challenged. They may be challenged with whatever they consider to be the rules or the regulations, quote unquote, right? Um, because there may be a certain tradition or a certain way, depending on the system that you're working with, of how the cards are supposed to be read. And it could just be a matter of you bucking the rules of the regulations because I'm looking at this figure here with his back to the officer and the officer having his back to the figure, right? So it could just be a matter of you may be wanting or needing or being encouraged to go beyond the rules and the regulations when it comes to whatever the card system or the card structure is, right? So there is that. Now it could be a matter of, if we're talking about putting our cards on the table, when this card comes up, this is known as somebody who may be in a position of authority, right? Somebody who enforces the rules, right? Going with the officer. The officer is a law enforcement person. So what he does is he enforces the law, which is enforces the rules, right? So this could be somebody who's a, a boss or uh, somebody that, you know, has to do with the rules or the regulations with work. So if we go with the idea this is work or activity by the table, there may be something having to do with somebody at work. And it could be a possibility here is about disciplinary action if we go with the idea that this is discipline. So somebody may be, you know, dealing with some sort of disciplinary action if we go with the idea that this may be a work-related situation, right? So I'm seeing that now. Another thing, if we go with the idea that this is about putting your cards on the table, sharing something, it's to establish some kind of order, right? Because this card can also be about order besides being disciplined and rules and regulations. It's also about, a, you know, a sense of order. So it could be if we go with the idea, this is talking about loss and shortcomings and coming up short with something, then this card could be saying too, like, if that's the case, how can you maybe be encouraged to maybe uh, put your foot down and maybe establish a, a greater sense of order? So I'm seeing that with Officer now. The one other thing I will say is that Officer is looking to this card. So there may be something more about that aspect or what I've been talking about with this card because he's looking at this card. So this card may inform us more about this. So we'll get to that in a moment. So now let's take a look at the card on the other side here. And here we have, here we have the lover card. So, okay. So here we have a situation that involves a man. When I'm reading gypsy, gypsy cards, this is much like gentleman in Lenormand. So I tend to look at this as a male significator card. So if you're a man watching this video, this situation involves you directly. And if you're a woman, then there may be a man who's playing a significant role or part in the situation. So if we go with a couple of things. Number one, if I go with the idea that this is talking about, you know, taking a chance or a gamble or a risk, it involves a man, right? So there is that uh, aspect of it, right? And so again, this whole idea about you know, putting your cards on the table, you know, being being mindful of what you want to share and what you want to keep close to the vest, so to speak, it still involves a man. So there may be a situation in which we're needing to be selective about what we want to share 
with a man or that share about a man. Right? So I'm looking at that now. If you're the person who's a cardomancer, so this could imply that it is you and you're looking forward to wanting to work on your cardomancy skills, right? And maybe coming up with your own sense of structure about how you go about that or again that you need to consider how you can be disciplined because now we have another direction card and the uh, lover card being the male significator he's looking at all these cards so these are cards that are in front of him right so that's significant to note because much like when I read Kipper when I work with gypsy cards direction is very important now one other aspect of the lost card that is important to note here is that it's a connector card. So because there's two people on the card, it connects the cards that are on either side. So there's a connection being made between officer and lover. Right? So this could be, if I combine these, this could be a person who's very disciplined, who's very ordered, who's very by the book, goes by the rules. Or that if we go with the idea that this is talking about um, putting your cards on the table, this could be a matter of maybe putting your foot down, officer, with a man, lover. Right? It's a matter of establishing some order in the relationship or the connection with a man. So that's how I would look at these three cards. So now what we'll do is we'll take a look at the outer cards. So the card closest to officer, and here we have letter. Okay, so now letter is a card of communication, and it's specifically it talks about written communication or written correspondence. So there may be something about, if we're going to share information, going with the idea that all these cards are on this side with this gentleman here in the, in the lost card, then there may be something having to do with some sort of written policy, written rule, or written regulation, getting rules or regulations in writing, right? So this may be something, again, having to do with work. It could also be that there may be some sort of disciplinary action, keeping with the work thing, and it's going to be in a form of uh, written um, documentation or paperwork. I remember when I was a manager, in my job when I worked out in the world one of the things we had when it came to discipline uh, disciplinary or um, forms of discipline with uh, co-workers and employees we had what's called counseling statements so I'm seeing that with these two cards so there may be something of a disciplinary action that's in the form of written paperwork or documentation right so if this makes sense with the work and that may be where the shortcoming thing comes up. Remember, I talked about loss being about shortcomings. So it could be shortcomings that are being documented. But it's a form of discipline. And then if that's the case, it may involve a man. Or that a man is going to be a part of the process. Meaning like a man could be facing here disciplinary action that's going to be documented. Or that he's the one who's doing the documentation. Right. Now, since I talked about this and I don't want to overlook this because this is one of my favorite aspects of the Lost Card is about the studying and reading of cards. And especially because the Lover Card could represent me, right, as the reader here in this particular case, this card would represent me. Then this is about writing down your readings. Again, because this is about written communication or written correspondence. So this would be about making notes about your readings and maybe being disciplined about the writing process. If you want to move forward with your study and practice of cards, one of the things you could do in terms of being more disciplined is to commit to writing down your readings. Right? So I'm seeing that with these cards on this side. So now let's take a look at the card that's behind the lover card.
And here we have, okay, so here we have Fidelity. So I like this. Okay, so now here we have a couple of ways of looking at this card. First thing I will note is that we have, with direction in mind, we have the dove on letter looking out of the line this way. And just the same thing, we have the dog on fidelity looking out of the line this way. So what I'm feeling inclined to do is I will draw a card for each side of the line to see what more they want to say about these aspects of these cards, right? Okay, so fidelity is a card that can represent loyalty, it represents faith, it represents trust and being trustworthy. So this could be, these two cards would suggest that the gentleman here could be a friend, going with the idea for me that dog represents man's best friend. So this could be a friend, this could be a companion, this could be a man who is loyal and trusting or trustworthy a man who's helpful and supportive because those are aspects of dog that I also take into account right so for some people if we talk about this idea about uh, putting our cards on the table you know being mindful of what we want to share and what we're going to keep close to the vest and it involves a man then it could just be a man who's a friend or that the issue may have to do with the man's loyalty, his friendship, and something having to do with trust, especially with the fact that the dog is looking the opposite way, right? And then we have the cross here in the background, and the cross being closest to the man could represent this idea of needing to have faith. So either the man needs to have faith or that there's something about the faith being put into a relationship or a friendship with a man. And that may be where we're having the issue or the problem, right? Now, if we go with the idea that somebody may be facing disciplinary action on the job as a possibility, right? Then this could be, it's a matter of the person not being as loyal or as faithful to the job as he could be. That's where he's coming up short. He may be demonstrating that he's not as loyal as faithful. And it doesn't have to be like he's, you know, um, breaking some kind of law, going back to officer and law enforcement. It could be something as minor as, or, you know, it's still, it could be a problem, but still something as minor as the person is um, not faithful to showing up on the job on time. Right? It doesn't have to be some big horrendous um, infraction but it could be something that has built up over time. Again, going back to the idea like when I worked on the job and we gave counseling statements out, I used to have to write people up for being late uh, X amount of times. Like if they were late so, you know, so many times in a row, then they had to get a counseling statement, right? So it could be something like that because that's a scenario that's popping up in my head. So it could be something about that if we're talking about the job, you know, and somebody could actually be losing you know, they could be close to losing a job because of whatever this is, right? Because in this particular case, officer can represent somebody in uniform, right? So it could be some sort of service occupation where you have to wear a uniform. You know, before I got into management, the job that I had at the time, I had to wear a uniform. So there may be something having to do with that, you know, but it's also making me feel like there may be something about the rules and the regulations or some sort of procedure is not being followed. And that's where we're having the problem. Right. But again, it could be something minor, you know, as like, uh, you know, tardiness, you know, not being on time or it could be something more, more um, significant or more severe. Right. But I'm seeing that I'm feeling like there is some sort of loss regarding some sort of rule regulation, something like that. And it involves a man. Right. But again, if we're talking outside of work, you know, something about sharing something or the shortcomings of, of a man, you know, where he's falling short, maybe in a sense of, you know, maybe not as being as loyal, not being as helpful, not being as supportive in a friendship way, or in a, you know, as a companion, not being um, supportive or helpful, right? And so that's maybe uh, someone's cross to bear. If I look at the cross, someone's cross to bear, 
you know, and that would mean a burden or a difficulty, right? And the fact that he's not facing this card, this is what we call inauspicious placement. So this could be something that he's struggling with, right? Something that's a, a bit of a challenge for him because he's not facing it, right? So that's how I would look at the cards that are here in the moment. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull back. All right. And so now I'm going to take a few moments to shuffle the cards again. And we'll add a card on each side of the line to see if there's something more we need to know about either the news or the message. We learned some aspect of it, possibly with officer, but we'll see more about that when I place a card on this side. And then the same thing with the fidelity card with the dog facing this side. So as I'm shuffling the cards, I'm asking what more do we need to know about the letter? So that could be the written correspondence, written communication. This could be about the paperwork, the documentation. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and cut the deck. And now I'm looking for a card to place next to letter, and that will be the card. Now I'm going to take the cards up and I'm going to shuffle again. And this time I'm focusing on asking about fidelity, so I'm asking what more do we need to know about that. again and fanning them out and now I'm picking one to put next to fidelity and I pick I'm picking that one all right and so now we're gonna pick the cards up and so now taking a look at the card that's next to letter because that's I'm gonna pull a uh, look at them in the order that I pulled them so here we have, next to letter we have, okay. So now here we have some money. So now this is a card that can talk about small changes being made. I tend to look at the, again, we have the sim symbol here of the table. So there's something about maybe something that we're working on or some, so, some sort of activity, right? And I go with the idea that the coins on the table and, and the idea of some money represents some changes needing to be made, right? So if we go with the idea that something is being documented something having to do with discipline or rules, regulations, or some sort of policy, it's to en enact or to create some change, right? So, and again, it's making me feel like the infraction possibly is not something major, and it just re requires making some small change. And the person who's on the receiving end of this has to ask themselves if they're willing to make or invest in making those small changes, right? So I'm seeing that. In another vein, because I'm being drawn to the mirror on the card, so this could be an opportunity for someone to take a good look at themselves because the mirror is a symbol of reflection. So this could be self-reflection, you know, and also about image and identity. So it could just be a matter of someone needing to take a good look at themselves, right? And with that in mind, that based on what they see, they see that they could make some changes, but they're not huge changes, right? The other aspect of this card could also represent, you know, some sort of improvements being made. So I'm seeing some money as representing, you know, small changes or little changes, self-reflection, image and identity, and as a result of all of that, some sort of improvement, right? So I'm seeing that now. If we go with the idea about taking a gamble, 
going back to loss being the middle card, you know, taking or considering some kind of gamble or risk, this card might suggest that it might not be as much, you know, there may be a small loss, right? Going with some money, right? So that is how I would look at that. So now that would be a matter of somebody who's facing disciplinary action. Now, if we go with the idea here that somebody is working on maybe their cardamancy skills, because I did mention that, then this could be if you are disciplined enough to maybe make some notes or, you know, uh, write down what comes to you in the moment when you're doing your cards, if you commit to that, you will see some improvement. You know, it's a matter of just making small changes in the way that you are approaching your study and your practice, right? So there is that to, uh, to be considered. Now, another aspect of this could be you may be at the stage where you could start earning a little bit of money, you know? If you've gotten to the place where whatever your system is, and maybe you've been doing readings for free, you know, just to get experience, right? Uh, maybe you're at the point now where you could start earning some money. It may not be a whole lot. And this is important to note for anybody who's doing any kind of cardamancy or any kind of spiritual service, actually. There needs to be some kind of energy exchange, right? So if you're providing a service, then the person who's on the receiving end needs to invest something in the process, Right, And so it could just be a matter of a small donation, a love offering, but there needs to be some kind of uh, equal energy exchange, right? So there's that, right? And too, now if I go back to the mirror on this card, this could be suggesting if we're so wrapped up in our study of the cards and that we are so wrapped up in the rules and the regulations, you know, wanting to do it the right way, so to speak. This card could be coming up with the mirror here. It's a matter of, you know, making sure that your reading practice is an actual reflection of who you are as a person, meaning that you read in a style that is comfortable to you, right? That matches who you are, right? And either one or things are going to happen. People who are, are going to like it or and, and people won't. You know, as a person who posts readings on YouTube all the time, I am very mindful of the fact that not everybody's going to enjoy the way that I read the cards, and that's okay. But in truth, it's an accurate reflection of who I am as a cardomancer, right? And sometimes this is more important than going with the rules, the regulations, and, and doing it quote-unquote the right way. You know, I'm a big believer in that you can learn whatever the system is, and at some point, you make it your own, right? So you have to have some idea of what the structure is. You have to have some idea of the order of the cards, you know, that kind of thing, the system, whatever it is. But at some point in your process, you're going to move more towards this, which is having it be a reflection of who you are as a person, right? Because every person reads their own way. So, okay, I'm going to get off my soapbox about card reading, and now I'm going to take a look at the card on the other side of the line. And so next to Fidelity, we have, and here we have Widower. Okay, so Widower is a card. I love it in this regard. Okay, so Widower is a card that can represent a couple of things. So first thing is that this card can, as a person, can represent somebody who's older, right? So this could be an older man. Right. Another aspect of the widower card is that it could represent going through a process in which you have to be on your own. Right. So um, because in the image, a man is standing at a gravesite. He's lost his partner. He's lost his significant other. And so now he has to move through the next chapter or phase of his life on his own. Right. And as I'm saying that, I'm hearing the old um, duet by... Um, Patty LaBelle and Michael McDonald on my own. So I'm hearing that. So um, there's something about moving into a space or a period of time where you are on your own or moving through a situation where you have to do it on your own or by yourself, right? 
So there's that. But now he's also another direction card. So now he's next to fidelity, right? So there may be something about the trust between a man now. The, the dynamic is changing. So there may be a situation here between a man and an older man, right? And in the middle of their relationship is a matter of loyalty, faith, and trust. And so now the man may be looking forward to, you know, deciding what he's going to put on the table in terms of the cards and what he's going to play close to the vest, but it may have to do with an older man, right? And the sense of faith, loyalty, and trust between them. Interestingly enough, if this is a man and an older man, they're each looking opposite ways, right? And so if we have an issue here where the older man is having a difficult time having faith in the man here, because this is the card between them and the cross is on this person's side, right? So let's just say that's a possibility. Well, what can they do to resolve that? You know, the, the older man may decide at some point he's ready to kind of just move off on his own because he's looking outside of the line at this point, right? So that is something to consider as well. So, and it could just be a matter of this man here needs to put his foot down, right? If we read the cards this way, you know, putting his cards on the table, deciding what he's going to put on the table, what he's going to share, what he's not going to share. But this is about putting his foot down. He may do it through writing in the hopes that it's going to make some kind of change, right? But if we go with the mirror here, it may be a situation in which this man here needs to really be true to himself, right? And it may be something having to do with his sense of self, his image, his identity, that the older man is having a difficult time accepting. So I'm seeing that. Now what I will do at this point is, because the line's getting really long, I'm going to go ahead and shift the cards over just a tad so I can draw another card to see what the older man is looking at. And as I'm saying that, or as I'm doing that, I will say this. If we go back to the scenario possibly where a man is facing some sort of disciplinary action on the job, right, because of his shortcomings, right, it may be in, uh, some sort of uh, infraction of the rules, then what could happen here is that the possibility here is that the person in question may be feeling that they want to go their own way, right? Remember, this is about doing something on your own or being in a space where you're, doing, you're alone or, you know, uh, on your own. So the difficulty here could be a person is not really responding to the person who's maybe setting the rules, maybe the person who's in charge, because maybe they have their own certain level of experience or maturity about the work. Widower is an older man, so this could be not necessarily an older man, but in the sense of like old, meaning I have experience, I have wisdom right? I have knowledge, right? And so maybe that's where the rub is coming in between the lover, meaning the man, and the officer, who's the person in charge or the person who sets the rules, right? So, so the person could just be a person who's breaking the rules because he chooses to do his own thing or go on, on his own, right? Because as I was moving the cards over, um, I was hearing the old Fleetwood Mac song, You Can Go Your Own Way, with this, so that's what's making me say that. All right, so now let's shuffle the cards one more time and see what is the widower looking at? What is he facing? and cut the cards. And fan them out. And now I'm looking for one card and I see it right off the bat. So we'll put it right there. And I'll pick the remainder of the deck up. Put it to one side. 
All right, so the line's getting a little bit long here, but that's okay. I love this. Okay, so looking at the card next to Widower, we have... Okay, this is great. And this will be a great uh, place to end the reading. So here we have the Desire card, right? So this card usually represents one's desires, one's needs, one's expectations. So now this makes sense with what I was talking about with the idea here of a scenario here where we have a situation between a man and an older man. So this older man could be father, uncle, grandfather, somebody older than the lover, right? And here we have between them, we have an issue regarding trust, fidelity, uh, something having to do with their sense of loyalty to one another, something that around that that's being called into question. I'm looking at it now with the desire card. It could be like whatever the expectations are, whatever the older man anticipates or expects of the other person, that is what's where we're coming up short. So he's having trouble dealing with this person because all he does is see him in terms of his shortcomings, right? Especially going back to the very first card with the mirror, right? So there's something about the image, the identity, the way that the person is being seen, right? And it's really based on this. There's a desire, there's a need, there's a want, or there's some sort of expectation that maybe the other person is not meeting, right? And so with that, I'm looking at the figure and she's looking out of a window. She's pulling back the curtains. So pulling back the curtains can symbolically represent some kind of revelation, something being revealed, you know, the idea about pulling back the curtain so you can see what's behind the curtain, right? So there may have been some sort of revelation, something being revealed that changed the person's outlook because the woman is looking out. So for me, that's her outlook. That's her view, her viewpoint, right? So there's something about something being revealed that has maybe changed or colored her outlook. So since the widower is facing this card, that's what I would say. Something has changed in the way that the person is seeing the other person here, right? And the person may not be living up to the expectations that the older person had for him, right? So it could also be too, like for him, what he may need to do, he may need to find a way to change his outlook right? And that could be accepting the person and his shortcomings, you know, quote unquote, because we all have flaws and we all have our own shortcomings, right? But to accept them. And so getting to the place where he's going to have to be willing to change his view, change his outlook about that. And here's the other thing about the desire card. This would suggest that it would take some time, right? Because this card is also about um, either needing to develop or learn patience, right? So there is some sort of patience with this. So it could be suggesting like if this man, lover, is waiting for the older man to come around anytime in the near future, it may not happen. It may take a while and he may have to be patient, right? So I'm seeing that with desire, right? Now, if we make this more general, then this could be as a last card. Uh, if we take this and make this maybe more of a general kind of situation, is the general or the moral of the story here is that we all have our own shortcomings. We all have our own ways in which we don't measure up, you know. So this is giving us maybe an opportunity to take a look at that, maybe to not be so hard on ourselves, right? But also to be mindful of the expectations that we place on other people because if we're seeing this about ourselves, other people share that same thing, right? And so maybe we need to take a look at our expectations, our needs, our wants, our desires around other people this week, because somewhere along the line, they may fall short, right? So on that note, I will go ahead and end this week's Oracle Outlook. I'm James Tim Mitchell, and as I wrap up, I'd like to thank you for sharing space here with me for this week's video reading, and I look forward to sharing the same space with you again in our next video reading together. So until then, I'm hoping that you have a wonderful day and I'm hoping that you have a wonderful week. Take care.